Welcome to Dream Center Online. We're so excited to have you here with us. We're excited to get into some praise and worship. Don't forget to join in the chats that are live on your computers um, and enjoy the service. Hi, Dream Center. Welcome to Church Online. We're going to praise God this morning. still come and it's your peace, it's your mercy and your presence that just brings us into a place none other than anything else that we can imagine. 
Lord, in this, in this time of worship, let everything that is cast down upon our fears, our doubt that's going around, and all the walls just crumble to the ground. Because you are the, the, the air that we breathe. You are everything that we rely on, Jesus. So we just worship you this morning. We lift up your name and we lift up your worship because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're such a mighty God and we love you. Yes. 
desperate for you and I I'm lost without you cause I'm lost without you cause I'm lost without you I'm lost without you
song Take me back to where we start And I open up my heart to you Cause I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started And I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this world Jesus, you don't owe me anything. 
What an amazing time spending uh, time with each other in the presence of the Lord in our lounge rooms, living rooms, wherever we may find ourselves. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of you. And I'm confident that the presence of the Lord was in your house today and that He is touching you and that He is blessing you. And I believe, I've always said this and I'll keep saying it, but I believe the best is still yet to come. I want to share with you this morning about giving to go to the book of 2 Corinthians and we're going to read chapter 9 and verse 7. It says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. It's the first part of it. I just want you to know that each of us should be giving as we purpose in our heart. And I want you to notice here that we shouldn't purpose not to give. It says that each one should give as he purposes. So we should give purposefully and it should be each one of us that are giving. And we should give from our heart. We shouldn't give grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. I often think about this because everything that we attach joy to and pleasure to is something that God uses and returns to us. When we sow a seed, a farmer sows the seed in joy, knowing that when that seed is sown, that in time that seed will produce a harvest. And so we have a responsibility with the seed that we sow to attach joy to it. And so when we take the seed, we water the seed. We water the seed with the water of the Word. We water the seed with faith. We water the seed with with belief and prayer that, that God will grow the seed and it will return to us a great harvest. Sadly, I see a lot of people sow their seed and they sow it grudgingly. And it's almost like I sow my seed, oh, I've got to put my seed in the ground. And rather than watering the seed with joy, they're literally rounding, you know, using Roundup on it and poisoning the seed and therefore stifling the ability of that seed to grow. I want to encourage you with your giving today that when you give, give with all your heart and give with a joyful heart, knowing this, that the seed that you sow will reproduce a great harvest and a great crop and God will see to it that your needs are met. So we're going to pray together. Uh, For those of you that are giving online, and that's probably much all of us at the moment, there's a little link down the bottom. Or you can go to our website and you'll also find a giving link on our Dream Center website where you can give. And uh, we'd love uh, for you to do that. So we'll pray and then we're going to hear a fantastic message this morning as we are in the book of Joshua. And we're excited about bringing another part of this message to you. But let's pray right now. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of sowing seed. You said that you give seed to sow and bread to eat. And Lord, as we sow our seed this morning, we sow it into good ground. Lord, we thank you that this seed allows us to continue as a church to do what we do. Lord, this seed also allows each of us as individuals to receive the harvest, the plentiful harvest that you have for us. And so Lord, I ask a blessing upon each and every home while our economy is in a state of re-gearing and re-firing back up and we're about to go in Australia 2.0. Lord, I pray great blessings upon each and every business, each and every household. And Lord, I pray that whatever people have lost in this time, it will be given back to them many, many times over, and they will recover all that has been taken or lost from them. And Lord, we thank you for this. We believe for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm sure you're saying amen. Well, sit back and relax and let's enjoy the preaching of the word today. Well, hello everybody, Dream Center Church there where you're watching us from home, online, live stream and from wherever else you're watching us from around the world, we want to say God bless you and it's a real privilege for me to be here, to be sharing God's Word in this series which is called Courageous, the series that we are touching on, on the book of Joshua and there's a special message for us all This morning, a message that I've given the title, Give Me That Mountain. And this is a message that speaks about the life of Caleb. 
And I'm sure that you and I were going to be so encouraged and so uh, inspired by the life of Caleb. And that's what Caleb would want us to feel. Inspiration this morning so you may be ready to live the life that God has already chosen us to live. Now, by the time we reach Joshua chapter 14, and that's what we're going to concentrate on, by the time we reach this place, Israel had already been involved in claiming the promised land, that second generation, where Joshua and Caleb had walked with them already and have already claimed the promised land, engaging in battle. They had already won decisive battles. And this is a good thing. But now is the time to divide the land and to give the inheritance to each tribe. And we find ourselves in Joshua chapter 14, that when the tribe of Judah is mentioned, a man came forward, gray hair man of 85 years old. He came forward and his name is Caleb. And Caleb came to claim his inheritance. What an example for us. 85 years old, and you're probably thinking, hey, I'm 50 or 60, and I'm already getting a little bit old. I want to wind down. Well, I'm telling you something. Caleb is going to tell us it's not time to wind down. It's time to be more fired up for the Lord every, every moment of every day. Caleb is a picture of the believer who is not satisfied with the ordinary, but wants more and more from the Lord. He wanted to fulfill God's purpose in his life, just like David did in his generation. And when we come to Christ, remember the moment you came to Christ, we were saved. The Lord saved us. The Lord called us to a new life. When we came to Christ, we began from the point of victory because Christ is our victory. We started from victory and we go from victory to victory. He saved us. He made us his children. He promised us His presence with the Holy Spirit who is in us, who is with us right now. Even while we're listening to this message, the Holy Spirit that lives within you, that is a promise of the Lord. And we will promise the victory, the grace, the strength for us to walk in victory every single day while we're here on earth. Because also, that promised land of the Old Testament is also a picture of us walking in victory while here we're on earth. Of course, this is not heaven for us. Heaven is waiting for us because the Lord went to prepare a place for us. But while we live on this earth as Christians, we must walk in victory. And that is so encouraging. That's what Caleb is going to teach us. But rather than walking in victory, lamentably so many of us are walking in the wilderness, a spiritual wilderness, Sometimes we're walking as if we, we are defeated. We're walking like we are depressed, like we have no purpose and no direction. Sometimes because of the challenges of life, we're not claiming our victory in Christ and we're not walking the way that he wants us to walk. And we should walk that way. And Caleb is going to encourage us today that we have the capacity given by God so we can walk in love and walk in joy and walk in fellowship, walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and walk under the glory of the Lord. You see, Caleb was willing to pay the price. Caleb was a man who loved the Lord and he was willing to pay the price to fight any battle so he could win the victories that God had prepared for him. Today, God wants you to win the victories that he has prepared for you. And there are four things that we're going to learn about Caleb when we come to the book of Joshua, this wonderful book, this amazing book that is going to encourage us. When we look at Joshua chapter 14, it is Joshua who begins from verses 8 onwards, who begins to talk of how he was given an inheritance. How he, when he was young, 40 years old, and he had walked together with Moses and, and Joshua, and how they had gone to check out that promised land, and that when they went, they came back with a positive report. You remember that story. And Caleb, first of all, he wanted to speak about his commitment. The first principle that we learn about Caleb was that he was committed because the Bible teaches us 
from verses 8 to 14, that Caleb fully followed the Lord. What an amazing statement. You know, there are statements that God can say about you. This would be a great statement that He could say about us this morning. Are we following the Lord fully? Are we running the race? Are we chasing after the price so we can run to win? Well, Caleb served the Lord fully. That means that every inch, every part, every nerve, every fiber of the being of Caleb belonged to God. When he says that he followed the Lord fully, that means that he was in God's hands. He pursued God in such a way that he wanted to please him. And even while he was 85 years old, he was already saying, I want my inheritance. I want that victory. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. What? Do you not know that your body is temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore, on the basis that we don't belong to ourselves, but we belong to the Lord. He bought us with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has come to live within us. We are temple of the Holy Spirit. Because of that fact, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What an amazing text that Paul has given us this morning. Are you committed? Are you fully committed like Caleb was? You know that the Lord wants you to live in such a way today, in this time, in the storms of life, to live committed to the Lord. Number two, Caleb was confident. He was confident. His confidence was in the Word of God because he followed the Lord. He followed what God had declared And he was faithful. He had faith. And you know that faith is more than saying, I believe in God. And that's a great statement. That's a great thing to say. I believe in God. Even the Lord Jesus said, have faith in God and believe in me. Have faith in God. But faith is more than just saying, I believe in God. Faith is acting on what God has said in his word. When we are obedient, when we are confident in our walk with the Lord, as the Bible says that when we walk in the Spirit, in Galatians chapter 5, when we are filled by the Spirit, Galatians 5.18, we are walking in obedience to what God has called us to do. Faith is acting on what God has said. It takes faith to win the spiritual victory. It takes faith on a daily basis for us, not just to look at the circumstances that we are living in COVID-19 and maybe in the isolation that we're living. It takes faith for us to, to gain that victory on a daily basis. We can do that. God has called us to live in victory. Only faith can give us the victory. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that faith is our victory over this world. That's why Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the conviction of things not seen. That's a powerful thing when we think about faith. And Caleb had that faith. Caleb was committed. Caleb was was confident. But thirdly, Caleb was courageous. And this is a whole series of courage to be courageous. He conquered back in in Numbers chapter 13 when he went into that promised land to spy it out. He saw the grasshoppers and they conquered it. He saw the giants in Numbers chapter 14 from verses 8 to 9. What are your giants today as a Christian? What's happening around you? Maybe the giants for you are discouragement or finances or sickness, the giants maybe are in the family, or the distresses, or maybe you've lost your job, you're not working at the moment. What are the giants? Maybe it's doubt. I want you to know that we need to be courageous like Caleb was courageous. That no matter what was happening around him, a man who was 85 years old, 
he took on the promises of God. And he spearheaded himself in faith doing the things that God had called him to do. He conquered himself. You know, that's very interesting because here Caleb could have said, I'm 85 years old. I can now relax, go to Hawaii, go and relax, go some for a holiday and just watch a lot of Netflix for the rest of my life. Of course, I didn't have Netflix then, but Caleb had to conquer himself. He conquered even his old age. He saw himself like someone who had the strength when he was already 40 years old. As it says in Joshua chapter 14, from verses 10 to 11, he conquered himself. Are you conquering yourself or are you limiting yourself? Are you doing what God wants you to do? Are you courageous? Are you just saying things with your lips but not with your life and your actions? When it comes down to the crunch, do you share your faith with others or are you silent? The Lord wants us to be courageous. And that's what Caleb is teaching us today, this morning, to be courageous, to take up the Word of God and to take up prayer in your life and be courageous in the decisions you make. Number four, we find something else about Caleb, something wonderful. He was a conqueror. He was a conqueror. He conquered he moved forward and went forward. And did he get that inheritance? Yes, he did. He got that inheritance there in Joshua chapter 15. It tells us very clearly that he went to conquer that land. He said, give me that mountain. He knew that in that mountain, the enemy was there. And even at that age, he went with the strength of the Lord and believing in the word of God and he went to conquer. He took out the enemy and he went there to live, to stay in that place, to leave a legacy for his family. You see, you who are a little bit older and you're listening to us, maybe you're in your 70s or 80s, you have so much to give yet. You can still leave us a great legacy for the family, for our church, for your family. Leave a legacy. And have that spirit of conquering. What did Caleb conquer? Do you know that that place was called Hebron? And the meaning of the word Hebron means fellowship. Caleb refused to quit until. He refused to quit until he reached Hebron. That place. That place that was called fellowship. He wanted to have fellowship with God. He wanted to have that place so not only it was there for his family and children and grandchildren, but also a place of fellowship with God. He was a conqueror. And you know what? When you're a conqueror, people will see that. When you're a conqueror, people will notice that. They will see it because they will see it in your actions, in your words, in your mannerism how you move forward in your Christian life, how you don't get discouraged just simply because you're going through a storm. People will know that you're a conqueror because your confidence is not just in yourself, although you have the skill and ability that God has given us, but you're conquering because you have full confidence in the Lord. You're a man and a woman of prayer. You have your space of prayer, a place where you can come together. And we must be like Caleb, a conqueror. We must be like Caleb who refused to quit. We must refuse to quit. We must refuse to give up. We must refuse to give in or to back out or to shut up or to just slip out on the side. We must refuse those things and we must move forward and line up with God's purpose. We must move forward and pray up. We must move forward and confess up. We must move forward and declare and claim what is ours in Jesus Christ. We must move forward and store up, store up those things that God has for us. We must look up and we must fill up everything God has for us. Isn't that amazing? 
Can you understand now these four qualities that are found in Caleb? Caleb, that mighty man of God. He wasn't a young man. He was 85 years old. A great example for us all. Nobody this morning can say, I'm too old. Even if you feel that 80 is too much for you, the Lord is saying, I have much purpose for you. Are you fulfilling God's purpose? Are you doing what God wants you to do? you got to have that stamina, my dear brother and sister, in this time. We have to have that stamina. We can have it because we have the strength of the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit who is in us. We have the Word of God. The Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. That we must be in that Word every single day. In the Word. Walking in the Word. Meditating in the Word. And as we begin to do that, our faith will grow. And we will show those same characteristics that Caleb showed. Commitment and confidence and courage. And he was a conqueror. Well, I believe that the Lord wants to leave you with these four principles for us today. That's why the Lord told Joshua to be strong and courageous. Joshua was strong and courageous. Caleb was strong and courageous. Caleb is an example for us today. An example. So when the storms are coming, when the difficulties are here, you need to stand up in the strength of the Lord. Stand up in prayer. Stand up with courage and know that the Lord is by your side. It is not just standing on our victory. It's standing in the victory of Jesus and walking in that victory. And that's why this morning I pray that if you are discouraged right now, if you feel the weight of burden in your heart right now, if you feel sick right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke all of that in Jesus' mighty name. I call out the victory of Christ that's yours. I call out that you come up and walk in victory for, before the Lord. And I call out that victory that's yours and mine by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, whom the Lord has called us to walk in such a way so He prepares us so we may fulfill His purpose. But there are some of you that are listening to us, that are watching this morning. Some who have not known the Lord yet. You're fearful. You're scared. You don't know what direction your life is taking. I want to pray for you this morning. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is your victory. I want you to know that Jesus Christ came to this world 2,000 years ago. And you know what He did? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to save you. He knows your condition. He knows your heart. He knows that you are far from God. He knows that you've been seeking Him. Or maybe you've been ignoring God. And this is the time because of what we're living now. Fear has crept into your life. I want you to know that God wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you peace. He wants to fill your heart with joy. He wants to give you a clear destiny. But you know what you have to do right now? You have to receive Him in your heart. You have to say, yes, Lord Jesus, today I want you to come into my life. So I want to make a prayer for you right now. And all you have to do right now as you're listening, just bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat these words. All of us together repeat these words and say, dear God, I thank you because you love me. I thank you because Jesus Christ came to this world. He came to seek me. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've done wrong things before you. But thank you because you love me. And today, I give my life to you. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. This day, I give my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord that if you made that decision, we would love to hear from you. We would love to know of that decision that you've made right now. And for all of us who are Christians, may you be encouraged by the life of Caleb. May this week be the best week of your life, simply because Caleb was teaching us that you already can walk in victory 
by the strength of the Lord. May you have a fantastic week. And like our pastor, Rod and Cheryl say, you are the best church in the world. God bless you. Thank you for joining us, Dream Centre Online. We trust that you have a blessed week. Stay in contact with us. Stay connected one with another. If you need prayer, don't forget to um, text us. Have a blessed week and we'll see you next week at 9am.